This video is my recollection of what happened in political science when I was young. Hi, my name is Carol, and I am doing a series of Me Too videos, and I'm jumping out of order. I intended to do them from as early on, as young as I was, going forward, but in light of the current news situation with Dr. Ford and Judge Kavanaugh, I find it's my civic duty, as she did, to come forward and to let people know that women can be telling the truth and know that they are 100% certain about who offends them, even if they don't remember the year, the month, the place, It happens. And let me tell you my story. I was a student and it either happened in 1986, 87, probably not 1988, but I'm not going to leave that off the table. I was a student at Aurora University and I had decided that I should take a political science class and understand political science if I'm going to have a degree. I felt that that was my responsibility to be educated in politics if I'm going to vote. So I took an introductory class for political science 101, thought it would be an easy A, and um, to my surprise, it was one of the hardest classes I ever had. It was um, very difficult for me, no matter how much I tried, tried really hard. I was not passing the class and it just so happened that towards the end of that quarter the professor had announced to her class that if anybody was having problems in the class to come see him because it's never too late. So I decided to do that. I went to see him and um, I told him that I wanted to know what I needed to do to get a better grade because I needed to get at least a C to be able to graduate. And I thought a C was enough at that time to keep my GPA acceptable. So he told me that he would meet me that evening at one of the local bars in the neighborhood near our university in Aurora, Illinois. And at that time I was in my twenties. I was newly divorced or in the process of it. And I thought that's what adults must do. They must meet for drinks to discuss things. I was very naive. So I agreed, uh, but I told him I had to work. I was a computer operator at a company called Norton in St. Charles. I had to work and I couldn't meet him until after I was done with work. So he agreed. I gave him my number at work. He gave me his phone number. I'm not sure if he gave me his phone number. I know he had my number at work though. So I left his office. Before I left his office, he asked me what I like to drink. I like to drink cranberry juice. Okay. So I went to work. At work, uh, probably about an hour before I estimate I might have been done, he called and he said, hey, you know, it's getting late. Instead of meeting at the bar, why don't we, you just meet me at my apartment on your way to go home. And at that time, I was living in Oak Brook, Illinois, and his apartment was in Naperville. I do not remember the address. It was a, an apartment complex. All I remember is that it was in Naperville. I wrote it down but I do not remember the address. So I agreed to meet him there. I went to his apartment and when I knocked on the door, he opened the door and he was in a white kimono. And for all of you that are saying, run, that is the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Why are you going into his apartment? I honestly believed that the professor was gay. And I don't mean to offend anyone that's gay, but the reason I thought he was gay was because when he would enter classes, 
and it was in a chilly months, he wore a scarf around his neck. He would walk into class, swing it, and say, good morning, class. And, okay, I admit I was in my early 20s. I wasn't exposed to that many people by then, but I thought from what people had described as gay and pointed out certain people that were gay, he seemed to have those characteristics. So I thought I had nothing to worry about. A gay person would not be interested in me. A gay man would not be interested in me. It didn't even cross my mind that this was dangerous. I thought I was going to learn something interesting. I thought he was going to give me this special answer about how to improve my grade. And I couldn't wait. I, um, I was a little shocked he was in a white kimono, but he took my hand and I'm just going with the flow and learning something new and thinking this is going to be my new gay friend experience. He took me by my hand and immediately proceeded to take me through his apartment and to the sliding glass door to show me the pond with ducks. Okay, it's still confirming in my head the guy's gay because never had I ever been led by a straight male by the hand and shown a pond of ducks. It was sweet and cute. Okay. Not really into ducks and ponds, but okay. Then we went back into his apartment. He had bookshelves, a desk, no sofa. Um, when I had walked in the door... The bookshelves were to the left of me. There was like a little cubby hole thing, which I'm assuming was probably the dining room area, but there was a desk and there was no sofa. I do not remember the color of the sofa, or I mean the color of the carpet. I just remember going to the bookshelf and him talking about the artifacts because he traveled around the world. And he took a necklace and put it over my neck. And he said that it was a fertility necklace. Okay, it's weird, but okay. I do not remember when he took it off or if I took it off immediately after that because I didn't want to ruin that fertility necklace. And I certainly didn't want to be <laughs> fertilized. But um, then he explained that he didn't have a sofa. So he had, he had, he had to go get a blanket to put down on the floor so we can sit on the floor. Okay. So he puts the blanket down. I do not even remember the color of the blanket. If I were to guess, it was red, but I don't know if that's accurate. And so I sat down as he proceeded to go into the kitchen that I never entered and he came out with two glasses and mine, his looked like he might have wine. Mine had cranberry juice. Um, then it finally dawned on me at that moment. That's why he kept asking me in his office, what do I like to drink? Cranberry juice. When he called me when I was at work, what do you like to drink? Cranberry juice. When I even got to his apartment again, before he went to go get the cranberry juice, he asked me what I like to drink. Cranberry juice. I don't know how many times I had to tell this guy, I like cranberry juice. It finally dawned on me. He wanted to know what alcoholic drink I like to drink. Oh, duh. Well, I don't like to drink alcohol, so I like cranberry juice. So we sat on that blanket and it wasn't long before he just planted a kiss on me and I burst out laughing. Mind you, believing that he was gay, number one. Number two, he's my political science professor. And number three, it was just weird. I burst out laughing and he said, wow, I never had a reaction like that before. And I said, well, I have never been kissed by my teacher before. And I apologize. I did call him teacher. And I know that professors like to be addressed as professor, but that's what I said. I remember that distinctly because it was so hilariously funny. And I've repeated that story several times to friends afterwards. Um, after this incident and I went home, I was then totally disgusted with that professor that I had respect for and just realized that it's a lost cause. I am not going to get a better grade. So when we had the final, I filled out the answers to his essay test that he always had as best I could. 
But on many of the questions, I put his famous saying, when we were in class and someone would ask a question that he thought was stupid, he would say, who the hell really cares? So that was my answer. And the one thing I learned in his class was that, who the hell cares? So I wrote that on my test, knowing full damn well that I'm flunking this class. But to my surprise, when I got my transcripts, I had a C. <sighs> Wish I would have gotten a better grade, <laughs> but I got a C. I got that C that I needed, that I mentioned that I needed to graduate. So um, the story was always kind of a funny story. It shouldn't happen to young girls, and I fear for young girls that are put in situations like that. And I want us to be aware, and I want to make sure that we're informing our daughters and our girls, our nieces, everyone, that stuff like this happens. And to not, if Dr. Ford has done nothing but to show us how you should not keep it to yourself or refuse to report it, you need to report it immediately. Tell everybody, anybody, scream about it, yell about it, make sure everybody's fully aware of it so that down the line, years, if you ever need to bring that up again, people don't claim to you that you might not remember correctly. Lucky for me, I did because I thought it was hilariously funny. I told my friends so they know the story. Sadly, though, I didn't report it to the school because when I told my boyfriend, my current boyfriend at the time, he said that he did not believe that I went to my professor's apartment not believing that something would happen. I was appalled because I honestly was stupid and naive. I, it didn't even cross my mind that something would happen because I thought he was gay. Even if he wasn't gay, I really thought I was going to get an answer. But if I didn't think he was gay, it is a possibility that my head would have told me that that was a stupid thing to go to an apartment at night after 10 o'clock p.m. to see a professor. It's easy to justify it in your head now on a 56. Of course, it's stupid. But back then when I was in my 20s, I just wanted that magical answer. <sighs> so people know about this story. And um, I've told friends periodically throughout the years, if something came up, someone told me they went to Aurora University, and then I would share my story. So it wasn't too long ago, well, relatively speaking, might have been 15 years ago. Um, somebody emailed me and told me to read a newspaper article that she sent me, and it was about a current situation, a case where a girl, a young girl was taking this political science professor to court about a similar situation where she went to see him about improving her grade and he made a pass on her. So I called the person that wrote the newspaper article, contacted him, emailed him, uh, contacted the school. I talked to Barb Calvert at Aurora University. I contacted, she had me speak to a police officer. I told him the story, told him how he had me go to his apartment and the police officer informed me that they were not aware that he had a, an apartment ever because he was always married and lived with his wife. And this was something interesting because when we had talked the professor had told me in his office that he was divorced and I was stupid and naive. I didn't know why he brought that up, but he also had asked me. I told him I was divorced. So when you're young and stupid, you just think that that's what adults do. I didn't question it. Later, I found out that the girl's case was either dropped or it just didn't seem like anything happened. I don't know if she ever found out that someone came forward and had a similar situation with this professor years before, but I got the distinct impress, impression that 
she wasn't believed, which is very sad. So I want to speak out in support of Dr. Ford and let her know and let people know that you can be 100% certain of who attacks you or offends you, sexually assaults you, sexually harasses you, makes passes at you. You could be 100% certain, but you won't necessarily remember even the year or the month or the address. You can know what city. I remember the city. I do not remember the address. I'm lucky that I remember it was an apartment. I remember I had a black coat on because after I left, laughed and he said, no one has ever laughed. No one ever, no one has ever had that reaction before when I kissed him. And I said, well, nobody, my teacher, I have never had my teacher. How did I say? Well, I have never been kissed by my teacher before. That's how I put it. And then he immediately got my black jacket, which was black. I might still have it and had little different colored speckles in the black. It was like a tweed jacket. So it definitely was chilly weather, maybe cold weather, but not super cold as winter would be in the Chicago area. So Dr. Ford, my heart goes out to you. Every woman that has ever experienced similar situations and worse, a possible attempted rape. It's scary, but we remember that person who did it. The other details might not be there, but we remember who did it because we sure the hell want to avoid that person in the future. So please stand up against what's wrong and let's support each other and remind people that we don't necessarily remember the dates or the addresses, but we will damn sure remember who offends us. Take care. Make our daughters strong. Make the girls strong. Make them speak up, report, and use this as a very important lesson. Thank you. Let's improve the world. Let's make it better for our younger generation. Thank you. Again, don't forget to subscribe, please. I think it's down there. Push that red subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you. Have a great day. I feel like it's very important that we bring this to the attention of our younger generation and especially the females so that they know what to expect and how to defend themselves and not tolerate it any longer.